So all I'm going to do today is basically tack on to what was being ministered about up here today. So um, Pastor Dan called me last night, was talking to me, asked me if I had the word ready, and I, t I told him no. I mean, I always do. I'm always going to have something ready. Uh, but man, I just, it really means a lot to me to get some time with God. And I, I may not have it until I'm up here saying it. And so it, it's important to me that I don't just get up here and teach something, preach something, encourage, perform. It's important to me that I, I say what I think God wants me to say. And so uh, I believe that that's been confirmed with uh, the ministry that happened up here this morning. So uh, I'm not going to have you stand when we, when we get in the Word, because I'm, I'm going to flip a couple times. Um, so you can stay seated. We're going to jump in. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to read 10 through 16. I'm going to read it out of the NLT. I'm sure they'll have it up there. It says, But it was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. No one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit so we can know the wonderful things that God has freely given us. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the spirit, using the spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach Him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. And we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to read verse 16 and 17. So when Pastor Dan was up here last week, he was talking about the Holy Spirit and how important the Holy Spirit is in our lives. And what we just read completely just reiterates that. Just understanding, like getting, getting the grasp that His Spirit is in me. And it goes, it's such a powerful thing to say when it, when it questions in there, who can know God's thoughts? And then they turn around and say, you can, because He's in you and He's given you His mind. I mean, that's a big thing. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. First Corinthians, or, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17, it says, So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, but how differently we know Him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, and a new life has begun. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. So what did we just read? We said, we just read that you're born again, you're a new person. And so that's important. You're a new person. Not only are you a new person, but you've been given the mind of Christ. And not only do you have his mind, but you have his life in you and human eyes won't necessarily see all of that that's what we just read and it, if you look at Ephesians 2 10 it says for you're his workmanship created by him to do good works that he set aside for you long ago and it's amazing when it, when it says he he created you he he handcrafted you and he handcrafted you to do these works that he set aside for you a long time ago. But it goes a little deeper because it said, the, the, the word they use there where it says created, when you go to the root of that word, it means always of God, forever of God. He handcrafted you and you'll always be of him and you can't mess it up. And so we well, when people were coming forward this morning and, and it's about 
It's not always going to be this way. You can handle it. Even when you feel like you can't, the life that's in you can. And not only that, but he's handcrafted you to be able to persevere, to be able to make it. Because sometimes the question is, it's, I can handle it. I got this. I got, and then it just keeps going on and on and on. And it's like, is this ever going to change? When is this going to change? Then, then the narrative changes a little in your mind. I don't know if I can handle this. And, and it's like, why does it have to last this long? And maybe the answer is to persevere. And the reason why that's so important, because when we read in the Bible, we can see that perseverance produces character. And you can read in another spot that perseverance brings you to complete maturity, needing nothing. And so sometimes, I mean, some things are hard to answer, but I still believe that everything God does in my life is for the good of my life. If I don't have that settled, then it makes every, everything really, really hard to get through. But if I believe that everything he does is good for me, that when I persevere through this and I look back and I say that it was good for me because it produced this in me, and now there's this fruit in my life that I didn't have before in my life. And that's so important because the, the world, the people around you, they're looking with human eyes. And, and what we just read, everything that's in you can't necessarily be seen with human eyes. And so people look so many times and they see all the things that are wrong because it's easy to see. But they don't see all the things that are happening behind the scenes because they can't be seen with human eyes. God sees it. You know it. Sometimes, you know, sometimes there are people. God sends in your life. They reaffirm it. And there's, you know, God's doing those things for us. But <clears throat> I, just, I just recently, th this semester, I, I teach at VU, if you don't know that. So this semester, I took on a new role. So I kept all, I, I still do all the things that I used to do. I took on a new role. It's called Academic Coach. And that's for uh, the entire College of Technology. So it's a lot of kids. And what it is, is basically there's these kids that come to college and they get a label stamped on them called at risk. Same thing happens to us. We get labels stamped on us by people around us. And so, for example, these, these kids are, they're at risk because they come from a home with addiction in it. They're at risk because they come from a home with violence in it. They're at risk because there's no college degrees in their home. They're at risk because there's bad finances in the home. They're at risk because their parents are divorced. They're at risk because the, their house is in a bad neighborhood. And so there's this whole list of why they're at risk. And the whole, the whole premise is this is why they're going to fail and not make it. And so we're, I'm not saying it's all, this is not all a bad thing. We're trying to find a way to help these people. But the same things happen to all of us. Because people just look with human eyes, they're not going to make it. They're at risk because. They're not going to get it together because. And it's never going to happen because. And the fact is, is I was at risk in every one of those categories. But I have two degrees. I got academic honors on both degrees. So labels don't change and overrule what God says. So it's important that we remember sometimes I, I, I've been, I'm just like anybody else. Sometimes you're just pretty much switched off. Like I'm trying, trying to worship, but I'm preoccupied. I'm switched off. 
And I know, I know everybody's been there and it just happens and you, you start to kind of fall into these things. But why, why do we have the, the presumption to put those labels on them? Why do we say they're not going to make it because ra rather than saying they are going to make it regardless of that? And the reason why we do that, I think, is because it's so easy to see that stuff. And it's hard not to do it the other way because you've got to sit down with somebody, get to know somebody, spend some time with somebody, find out what their heart is, find out what's going on in their mind. So you, you, can't, you can't just look at a situation and say, I'll fix it with a conversation. I'll send an email, text them every once in a while. And it, it's... If, if, if this is going to change this specific thing, well, I'm going to have to buy a lot of coffee and egg McMuffins. <laughs> because it's so easy to say, yep, addiction's there, violence is there, nobody's been to college before, they're set up for failure. Maybe they don't believe that. And sometimes all it takes is one person to reaffirm, say, you know what? You got it. You can make it. Doesn't, none of that stuff matters. Just because they didn't doesn't mean you can't. Yeah, right. Come on. So just because they didn't doesn't mean you can't. Just because this person's like that doesn't mean that you have to be. And so, like, I have kids that will come to me and we, they'll, they'll, be with our, they'll work with one of our other services and they'll hand me the paper it's every year, every semester. I need a lot more time than everybody else. And I probably won't be able to complete a test in your class period. I say the same thing to every one of them. I bet you won't need any extra time. Because the problem is, is everybody's always told them that you're slower than everybody else. You're going to need more time. You're not as quick as everybody. You don't read fast enough. Whatever it is, and I don't say anything in depth. I just say, I bet that you're not going to need extra time. And I've never had one student need to go over a class period to take a test. Ever. I've been doing it for seven years now. And I get them every year. And sometimes, in life, you need the same thing. I bet you can do it. I bet you can do it. I know you can do it because I know who's in you. And even if you say you can't, how dare you say he can't? So sometimes you get these labels, outcast, failure, loser, whatever it is, because you failed you get called a failure. Because you lost, you get called a loser. The, these things happen, but none of that stuff's true. Sometimes you get that you're just like your mom or you're just like your dad and you come from a, a place where that's not a good thing, right? And, and so why is it that, that one kid, somebody can, can ask him, why, why do you have this addiction? And one kid can say, I have this addiction because my, my dad was like this and my whole family was like this and my my dad wanted me to do it with him, and I just got involved with it, and, and that's why I'm like this. But his brother, you ask him, he will say, I don't do that because my dad did it, and my family did it, and he tried to get me to do it, and I'll never do it. And that's the way we got to be. I won't fail because I'm handcrafted. I have failed, but I am not a failure. I have lost, but I am not a loser. I come from a family where everybody's been divorced, but it doesn't mean that I will be. I come from a family where there's always been spousal abuse, but it doesn't mean that I will. I come from a family where nobody made it through college, but it doesn't mean I can't. I come from a family where nobody held a steady job, but I'll have a career. 
because I'm handcrafted. To always be of God. Not only that, but everything that you say I am that I come from, I'm a new person. I have new stock. I have a new bloodline. His spirit is in me. I'm in him and he's in me. I have the mind of Christ. That means I can think like he thinks and I can know what he knows. That is a powerful statement. I can think like he thinks and I can know what he knows. Any mess can become a message. Write it down. Any mess can become a message. I've had messes that have become messages. And the reality is I'm standing up here, but in life I'm standing in messes that I expect to become messages. And my, my expectation in these things is important. Because it's exactly what we're talking about. Do I believe what everybody else says? Do I believe what it looks like? Or is my expectation held in what he says about it? And I can know what he thinks about it. I can know what he knows about it. And I can choose to persevere. And I can have fruit in my life later that I don't have now. The problem, the, the problem with it, here's, here's the big problem, is we can begin to buy in to everything that they say. Sometimes it's just dragging out and dragging out and dragging out. And, and like I said, the narrative changes and you begin to buy into it. Maybe they're right. Maybe I can't handle it. Maybe I'm not going to make it whatever it is, and you start buying into those labels, maybe I can't overcome it. And all these things start to pile up and you start to buy into it and you say, and you just think, maybe that's what I amount to. I'm telling you, I'm, it, it's hard. We're not, talk, we're not talking about just the, the surface Sunday morning where you just read a scripture that day and it fixes everything. I'm talking about when you're in it and it's hard and you're battling it and you're dealing with it. And you start to think, maybe that is what I amount to. And this is why it's so important. It's so important. It's such a big problem because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. So as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. When you begin to believe it, you'll start being it. Yeah. And that's where it's such a problem. And so you begin to think to yourself, maybe I am at risk. But this is, this is what I want to say to you. As much as you might think you're at risk, and as much as everybody else might see or say that you're at risk. You're even more so at risk at becoming everything God has created you to be. Because when he starts a work, he finishes a work. And so that's what we got to think in our heart. That's what we got to believe. That he started it, he's going to finish it. And as much as I'm at risk at this, I'm even more at risk at becoming everything he says that I'm going to be. Always of God, forever of God. And I believe what he says about me. I know what he says about me. I know what he thinks about me. My expectation is to become who he says that I'm going to be. My expectation is to do what he says I'm going to do. It may not mean, it doesn't matter what somebody else thinks I should do. But if he has called me to do something, I can believe and have faith that I'll go do it. And I believe it 
in my heart and as I think, so I will be. And so when I believe it, I'll be it. And you might call me at risk and you might slap a label on me, but I am at risk at becoming everything he says I'll be. And stamp the label on me, son of God. Regardless of everything else. There's things about you that people don't see. Doesn't mean it's not there. Because even these guys writing the words in your Bible were saying, we used to see it like this, but we were wrong. Now we know so much more. Sometimes you even just praying for somebody, you think you know what's going on and God reveals something for you to go talk to him or pray to him about. And you're like, I had no idea. I just thought I did. So there's things that people say, just general statements. And I'm not taking away from the wisdom or anything like that. You know, you are who you hang out with. I'm not taking the wisdom out of that. It's, it's good. But on this side of everything, we're kind of at an advantage, by the way. We're on this side. We can look back and say, well, Jesus was above everybody that he hung out with. And he hung out with the drunks and he hung out with the poor people and he hung out with the people that were full of diseases and he hung out with the rich tax collectors that everybody hated and he never became any of them. That's important because I'll hear, I'll hear people tell a good, strong, solid Christian, don't go there because of all that stuff that's over there, you infect them. Just because you go there don't mean that you're going to become that. We just have all these labels floating around out there that this is who you'll be if you go over there and hang out with that person. But I also think that because you go hang out with that person, they might become somebody else. And like I said, I'm not taking away from the wisdom of that statement or or anything. I'm just saying, look at the other side of it too. We're not destined to fail. Regardless of what you're going through, you're not destined to be overcome by it. You are destined to persevere through it and be more than you were before and become everything that God's called you to be. Become who he's called you to be. And this is where we're going to go back to the beginning. You are a new person, handcrafted by God, His Spirit alive in you, you in Him, the mind of Christ, perfectly created for all these things that He set aside for you. And I'll add one on to it in, in, in uh, 2 Timothy 3. I, don't, I think it's like, at the end of it. And it's telling us that this is the word of God. It's good for correction. It's good. And, and at the end, it says that because you have this, you're prepared and equipped. So you have the mind of Christ, new person in him, him and you. And you have this word that makes you prepared and equipped even more so. You're set up for success. Yeah. Whatever it is, you're set up to overcome it. Regardless of how long it's been going on, regardless of what other people are saying, you are set up to overcome whatever it is that you're dealing with. Doesn't matter what people are saying about it, you're set up. Believe it. Overcome it. Be everything that God's called you to be. If God says that you're something more than all of that, and you decide to agree with him, I believe that you have a pretty good formula 
to become more. But there is, a, there is, there, if you decide, if you choose, so don't buy all the other labels. Don't buy all of that stuff. Buy in to how he labels you. You know, you can read Ephesians 1 and see all kinds of good labels. Saved, set apart, son. I mean, I mean just the whole chapter. How he labels you. So you are at risk of becoming everything that he's called you to be. Becoming everything that he says you are. So if you have no one else in your life that is saying that. If you have people that say you're not worth the risk. Know this. God, your father, says that you are worth the risk. To the point... That he already went all in on you. He shoved all the chips to the center of the table. He already gave it all. He went all in on you. That you'll become everything that he's called you to be. You will be the person that he created you to be. So you're not a person at risk of failing. You're a new person. You're not a person at risk of becoming something that you shouldn't be. You're a person of the spirit alive in you. You're not a person that isn't intelligent enough to do it. That isn't equipped enough to do it. You are a person who has the mind of Christ. You can think like he thinks and know what he knows. You know, this morning, I told Stephanie to, to just look and from like our row or just behind us, there was a drastic difference. And the fact of the matter is, is sometimes when people come in here and, and they don't move around and hug people and they have a lot of stuff on their heart. And they're back there and they're just battling it. I just said, look, there's people in here in a battle right now. And so, if you are, I would encourage you, hug somebody. It'll help. And if you're up front and maybe today was a really good day, let the discernment of Christ work through you. Go, be, go, go love your best friends. And then go find the ones that he's pointing out to you. Give them a hug. It may change their whole day. Because it's just like, it's just like the kids taking a test. I bet you can do it. You know, sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Because he's in you. And you just hug somebody. And all of that gets on them. You don't have to say anything. So if that's you this morning, I, I want to reaffirm to you all the things that you're going through. If it looks like you're at risk of losing everything, at risk of not making it, at risk of losing family, at risk of whatever it is. You are at risk of overcoming everything that it is. As big and as monstrous as it thinks it can become, you're going to overcome that's what you're at risk of. Buy it. Believe it. Walk it. Become it. Get on the other side of it. Because hindsight's always better. Yeah, yeah. Be like, man, I almost bought it. But he that's in me. We walked through it. And now, the mess is a message. Now I'm more equipped than I was before. Now I can walk into a place that I couldn't go in before. Now I have something to say that's real. Now I have something where I can say, I'm not just giving you advice. I've been there. 
I'm not just giving you where I looked up on Google and got the five best steps, the best plan to deal with this. I'm telling you, I've been there, I've walked it. When that mess becomes a message, it, it's, it's way better than Google, baby. No. It is. You got, I, I'm just saying, you all, you all, everybody in here is so powerful. And sometimes it just seems like the mess is more powerful. But everything that God does, I'm not, I'm not saying that he gave you the mess. I'm not, I'm not doing any of that. Everything that God does is going to make you better. And so you might be walking through a mess and you might not think that you're doing that good now. And you wish, I wish I could get back to the place I was where I was feeling good and strong and I was powerful and I could witness for Christ and all these things. You're going to be even more powerful. And there's so much of it in this room and it's just getting more and more all the time. And you can go to a community with a message that's real. Any mess can become a message. And if you're in one, expect it to become a message. If you're in a mess, Expect it to become a message because everything he does is good. We can stand this morning. So as I was, as I was praying for this message, I, I talked about the reason why I talked about my new role at the college is that's kind of how it all started is the Lord just brought this to my mind but then he started showing me faces of people in here and it just kind of all unfolded from there so like I said this morning I'm, I'm just tacking on to the way that people were ministered to up here this morning and so really, really what I want to do is just if you didn't come up here this morning, I just want you to know that you can have it in your seat. If you didn't walk up here this morning, you can have it in your seat where you're at right now. If you, if you feel like I, I missed the opportunity, I should have went up there. I didn't do it. I blew it again. I failed. You can have it in your seat where you're at. If you're watching it on a TV screen somewhere, you can have it right there too. It doesn't matter. Lord, I just ask that our mindset this morning would flip from I'm at risk of failing in whatever it is. Lord, you know, I don't know it all, but you know every single one individually. Lord, help, help us switch our mindset, not switch it off, switch it on to what you say, that I'm not at risk of failing I'm at risk of becoming everything that you say that I am Lord I just ask that you would solidify it in their hearts and their minds because as they think in their heart then so they will be so Lord this morning I ask that you order their steps as they walk out of these doors that they're walking into being it Every step takes them to it. And Lord, I just ask that you would solidify in them that they know it. Lord, I thank you that you would choose to go all in on all of us. Push all the chips in the middle and say, we're all worth it. You believe in us. Sow into us set us up to do it, handcrafted. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for these people, everything that they've done and everything that they're gonna do. In Jesus' name, amen.